So if you have met someone where all the exes are crazy, all the exes have wronged them in some way, they haven't got a good word to say about their ex, they did everything for the ex and the ex repaid them by treating them terribly. Their parents were never there for them. Their siblings are selfish and don't care about them. Their adult children don't care about them and are selfish and have no respect for them. Their friends lied to them, stole from them. When it comes to dealing with narcissistic people, some behaviours can be similar to the behaviours of those of a victim. So a victim can have come out of a toxic relationship with somebody who treated them very poorly. A victim can have a parent who treated them very poorly and were never there for them. A victim can have a very selfish, toxic sibling. A victim can have a very toxic friend who needed help and support and took the friend, took the victim for a ride to get what they wanted from the victim. So although it can sound, the stories can sound similar, when it comes to a narcissistic person, there is a repeat pattern of behaviour. The victim often will have some good to say about them, will often try to be supportive, will often justify why people let them down, will often be apologising often for things they haven't even done. Narcissistic people will be shifting all the blame over to somebody else. They'll be playing the grandiose hero of how they tried to save somebody and failed, or the victim of how somebody took advantage of them. They are looking for that sympathetic attention. They're looking for that compassion. So seven red flags, you could be dealing with a narcissistic person or you could be getting into a narcissistic relationship is number one, all the exes are crazy. They talk badly about all the exes. They're usually explaining to you everything they did to the ex, but twisting it and claiming the ex did it to them. They'll be claiming the ex is an addict. They'll be claiming that the ex is obsessed with them, that the ex will not let them go. And when the ex is trauma bonded, it can seem like the ex is obsessed with them. So it's quite believable. When the ex is left with depression and anxiety, they might have taken up drinking. So having addictions can seem possible. However, you'll notice there's a pattern of exes who all did wrong by the narcissist. Yeah, that narcissist cheated on all the exes. So there's a big red flag there that the narcissist cheated on all the crazy exes. That's a choice that the narcissistic person made. They chose to cheat because they lack respect and they lack loyalty and they lack empathy. Two, irresponsible, immature. Now we can all enjoy being immature now and again. We can all enjoy being irresponsible now and again. However, narcissistic people are thrill seekers, they can be big risk takers because they're not worried about the consequences that they'll think about later, they'll think about how to get out of something later. Wherever they go, drama seems to follow. And when you're in a narcissistic relationship, it's going to feel like wherever you go, drama is going to follow because they bring the drama into your life. You'll often find that when they're not, before you met them, when they're not in your life or when you've got no contact, you suddenly become drama free, so to speak. Now life is a bit chaotic, so you're never completely drama free. However, a narcissist will bring so much drama into your life, you can barely catch your breath from one drama when another one comes along. They will expect you to be there for them. They will expect you to pick up after them. They will expect you to verify that they're a decent person, that they weren't there, that it was nothing to do with them. However, when you go through any difficulties, any problems within your life, they will disappear on you. They will fail to message you. They will fail to call you. They will fail to be there for you. They are very disinterested in you because they are all about self. They believe they 
are in, are special. They believe they're entitled to special attention, excessive attention from people. Therefore, they expect you to help them out in their time of need. Yet as they lack empathy, they'll not be there to help you out in yours. They criticise you, they mock you, they humiliate you, they play very hurtful jokes on you. And then when you try to explain that that's hurt your feelings, they'll accuse you of not being able to take a joke. I was only joking. What's wrong with you? Are you too sensitive? Oh, stop being overdramatic. Oh, stop overreacting. It was only a joke. Learn to take a joke. They're going to chip away at you and then they're going to twist it that your emotional reactions to their actions are the problem when without their actions you would not be having those emotional reactions. Or they're going to just turn around and go, you're really going to go out with them? I don't trust that friend of yours. Oh, that outfit looked better on you a few weeks ago. Have you put a bit of weight on? Oh no, I'm not. No, I'm not saying it looks bad on you. I'm just asking if you've... And they're, they're just going to chip away at you. You can say something light-hearted and they can just turn around and say, was that supposed to be funny? Because you're not very funny. I'd stop trying to be funny if I was you. Do you really think you should be doing that? And if you're going to continue doing something, they're going to sabotage you and put roadblocks in the way, such as career goals. They're going to put you down and invalidate you over those career goals. And if you try to attain them, they're going to create the cop conflict and the drama and the chaos and sabotage you from doing the things that you want to do. They might just turn around and say, no, who else is going to love you? Or you'll never find someone like me. And all these subtle insults, all these subtle criticisms and put downs causes unnecessary anxiety within someone that the narcissist apparently cares for. And this anxiety then causes so many issues within a person within an individual, it's very hard for them to live their day-to-day -day life because they're full of anxiety, full of self-doubt, full of not feeling enough. A narcissist is going to drive you into drinking and then up and leave you and tell everyone around you that you're the crazy one. The things they say to you, the way they treat you, causes that much insecurity and self-doubt within you that you no longer know whether you're coming and going and that really helps with the narcissist make campaign against you and this is how they can get away with telling their new supplies that their exes are crazy isolation they're looking to isolate you from friends from family from finances from any form of support because once they've got you isolated it's harder for you to walk away from them it's harder for you to leave them they're going to build up your trust and faith within them they're going to influence you to have their back so much that you are going to defend them because you really love them, care about them, you're going to defend them so passionately towards your friends and family that when you realise your friends and family were right, you've been isolated from your friends and family and you've no longer got them to turn to. They're going to isolate you from your finances, whether they take credit cards out in your name without you realising or sabotage you from getting work or they don't work and take all your money. However, they will be explaining to the new supplier that it was you that took all their money. Impatient. Narcissistic people are incredibly entitled people. Therefore, they lack the patience to deal with stuff that they just don't want to deal with. They lack patience when they believe they're not getting served as fast as they'd like. They will talk down to people. They don't recognise that everybody plays a role in society and without everybody playing the role, society would crumble. So those that they believe are less than themselves, they are going to be incredibly rude to, they're going to be incredibly insensitive to. And things such as like staff at places, and we are all staff to some extent to each other, they are going to be incredibly rude too. They're not going to respect that that staff member is going in to do a job, to get paid, to pay for other things. 
might even to be to buy the products that the narcissist sells. So therefore they need that job to buy the products so that the narcissist can be where they want to be. They don't understand that everyone has that role in society. So they can be incredibly rude to staff or when their food doesn't arrive quick enough, as quick as they would like, they are going to get incredibly impatient. They're going to start throwing tantrums. They're going to start sulking over a simple thing such as food. Now we can all be impatient in life when we've got stuff going on that's on our mind and we then flip out over the little things when we're in a rush to be somewhere because we, we didn't get ready on time. We can all be impatient with a narcissist. It's a pattern of behaviour and it always depends on who is watching them at the time and it also depends on the image that they're trying to sell to other people. So you might have a narcissist that will directly be rude to staff or you might have a narcissist that will be rude to the staff once the staff's back is turned. Listen, well, pay close attention to how they treat other people. They're going to be very quick to complain when things aren't going their way. And even if it's their fault that things aren't going their way, they're going to be very quick to complain and find somebody else to blame. They don't communicate with you. They can monopolise a conversation. Now, when you first meet someone, they can seemingly gaze into your eye and they can seemingly act like they want to know things about you and ask questions. But they're, they're asking these questions to find out what you want out of your life so that they can sell you those things to you so they can mirror you and reflect them back to you and future fake with you. Most genuine people when they meet are discussing what each other would like out of life to see whether there's a connection, whether there's anything to work on. Genuine people are going to be honest and say oh you want to get married? And, no I don't think I'm really into marriage and somebody who wants to get married who is genuine would respect that the other person doesn't want to get married and say oh well that's something that I would really like out of life so perhaps that's not a relationship whereas somebody who is narcissistic that wants to get married and is told by somebody that they don't want to get married will sit there and go oh no I don't really want to get married either but then they are going to find a way to constantly go on about marriage once they've got the feet in the door, once they've got their feet under the table, they are going to try and gain that marriage with that person. They're going to go with that person with things like, you'll never find somebody like me. They're going to coercively control them into a marriage that they didn't want to be in. So you've got genuine people that can ask about each other's lives to see whether they're compatible because we are going to have our differences. Then you've got narcissistic people that are going to ask, match, and then change the story data down the line. So the narcissist might not be the one that wants to get married, but they're going to claim that they do, and then they're ever forever going to put it on the back burner. They're ever forever going to come up with an excuse of why you can't get married yet, but they're usually going to find a way that rationalises it within your mind or a way that blames you. They want to know all about you, but only so they can use that against you. They might just completely monopolise the conversation talking about themselves and how amazing they are and all the things they've done and how special they are and how you're lucky to be on a date with them. They might tell some grandiose stories where you think, ooh. But if you start asking them about these because you're interested, because you're curious, they might shut down or accuse you of prying or they might lead into a bigger lie, a bigger exaggeration. And you sit there and things just don't make sense. It's because they're leaving the truth out of the equation. They want to talk about their important stuff and they can be very dismissive towards you. And then further into the relationship, when there is issues that need discussing, when there is problems that arise because that's a part and parcel of life, issues happen, problems come along. Narcissistic people don't want to deal with these things. They don't believe that they should have to. To them, you go and deal with it. You go and sort it. 
Do we have to talk about this now? Are you really trying to start an argument? I told you I don't want to argue with you. They're all of a sudden no longer going to want to communicate with you. And they certainly don't want to communicate about any of your feelings. If you try and approach them about your feelings, they're often just going to state how they've made you feel and turn around and say, you're jealous, you're insecure, you've got trust issues, you're overreacting, you're over thinking, don't be so sensitive. Time you just calm down. They're not interested in helping you. They're interested in validating how you feel to then invalidate that feeling for you. They groom you. They move things on very, very, very fast with you. Nobody falls in love faster than a narcissist who needs a place to stay. So they are going to accuse their ex of being crazy. They're going to find out that you'd like to settle down and get married. They're going to want to settle down and get married with you. And they're going to move in pretty much as quick as they can and then tell you that you'll never find somebody like them. They are going to come on strong with the love bombing, with the giving of gifts, with the flattery. They are looking to get you to serve them. They're going to declare love and they're going to promise things in the future, which of course in the future they'll not deliver, they'll just find a way to blame you. Narcissistic people are very good at grooming people to get their needs met. They're very good at getting sympathetic attention from people. They're very good at spinning their stories in such a believable way that the victim's truth is often not believed. Or when the victim speaks out, the narcissist accuses the victim of being bitter, of being jealous. Narcissists twist and turn everything they can into their favour. They flex. They take the facts and then they falsify the information to lie about the situation so that they can evade exposure. There's lots of red flags out there and some can be behaviour of those who have been a victim of a narcissistic person. When you are dealing with a narcissist, it's a repeat pattern of behaviour because they don't see themselves as a problem. They don't do anything to improve themselves. They just do things to improve on their lives. They don't change for the better. They change to suit the person they're trying to exploit. If anyone has any red flags that they noticed, please do add those into the comments. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support with the channel. It's greatly appreciated. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about narcissistic behaviour. To give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with within your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact, and different methods to find what works for you to help you understand and overcome narcissistic and emotional abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. If you are looking for further help and support, I do have several online guides available and those teachable links are in the video description. If you're looking for someone to speak to, I have partnered with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is also in the video description. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.